All right. Well, I'm not sure how well this is going to work. I am holding my iPhone 10s phone up to my Quest 2 headset. Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 is running in the background, as you can see. Now, it's very hard to focus through a Fresnel lens, which is what are the lens types inside of the Oculus. So I'm trying to do this. You can see the lines pop up occasionally, and you'll see reflections of the light bouncing back off the phone onto the lens like a glare. So you can see, I think pretty well, that as best as I can show it here, that the focus and the clarity is pretty darn close to what you're seeing in the recordings. Um, I mean, you can see that I'm getting a pretty decent looking graphic here. I can see pretty far in the distance, and what you're seeing is th literally through the lens of my Oculus, as best as I'm able to catch it here with the iPhone. And hoping that the headset doesn't go into standby here without me actually having it on my head. So yeah, so some of the glare that you're seeing is not in the headset, but it's just coming from the phone. All right, so that's not too bad. That was a bad day, kind of. Um, oh, oh, let me uh, <laughs> let me turn my joystick here a little bit before we crash. So yeah, so you can see. You know, let's try and zoom in a little bit here or get a little closer to the... Oh, well, I'm actually outside the airplane right now. <laughs> well, you can see it's pretty clear. It's pretty close to what I was getting. So now, this is literally all the same exact settings what you just saw. Now, I'm taking off in the different direction, but this is that same airport, same plane, same everything, other than the direction that I'm taking off. You see my frame rate is 36 and you, it doesn't bounce very much. It doesn't change very much. So this coming up here, this is the same area that you saw in my previous video as well as what you just saw through the headset. This is that same area that we just filmed through the headset. So what you know, what I'm seeing here on the recording and what I'm seeing in the headset is to me very, very close to the same quality. Now my frame rates right now should actually be a little bit better than this but I believe I have buildings up on high currently and I don't need them on high and I think I even have my water up possibly on high or medium. But we're gonna go over all my settings as best as I can remember every day. <laughs> so, and it's hard because there's so many settings, but if, if you're wondering about a setting that I don't show, just leave it in the comments and I'll, I'll tell you what I have set there. I don't use the Oculus app. I did try again with the link cable and ear link. And with the link cable, my computer, believe it or not, just doesn't have the right connection. I didn't buy this with that in mind. And so I don't have the right connections. I can't use the Reverb G2 because I do not have a digital display uh, connection. I don't have a connection to use with the cable. So. I bought this strictly with VR through the wireless Quest in mind, more, more than anything. And so yes, I use virtual desktop. It is wireless. I do not use the Oculus apps. I do not use a debug. I do not use a tray tool. Changing the settings in the Oculus app has no bearing on this. This is strictly Steam VR. And it is a Microsoft Store version of the game. It was the first. So, all right. So here's my virtual desktop settings. Now, these are just the basic settings. But uh, you can see I have it set up with environment quality low, frame rate 90, desktop bit rate. And that's only the desktop itself, not the streaming of the game and so forth. So, and I have boost clock rates on. I don't notice any major drop in battery. I can fly for a couple of hours. And worst case scenario, I'll plug it in. 
<laughs> and get some power. But for the most part, no, I don't change that. Okay, here for VR graphics, I have it set on high. The RTX 3070 is my card. The frame rate is 90. VR bitrate, I keep bouncing this around, but 70 seems to be the best for that and the sharpening. The synchronous space warp, now I leave that always enabled, makes a big difference in the smoothness. And sliced encoding is turned on. So those are my virtual desktop, and this is the virtual desktop app that's available in the Oculus Store. Now the game is still loading in the background, but we'll take a look at the Steam VR settings as well as the desktop settings. So here's my NVIDIA control panel, and you'll see that I am running the latest version of the NVIDIA driver, 512.15, which was released a few days back, and I've been running it since, and I've probably gotten 20 to 25 hours of flying time now on this driver without any crashes, without any issues. I, I haven't made the change to DirectX 12, even though that's what's running on my computer. In the game, I'm still collecting DirectX 11. I don't know if that has a bearing on VR, but I do know that it used to crash more with DirectX 12 than not. Um, all these are default so far, even that one that set off, that is a default. But then you can see I got these changed down here, very minimal changes. These are the only few that I have actually set to anything. And I had the virtual frames pre-rendered at four. I dropped it back down to three. And it's been very, very nice. But yeah, so only a few setting changes here in the NVIDIA control panel. Now a big part of virtual desktop is your router because your computer needs to be connected to a very strong connection. They recommend wired connection for your computer, and that's what I have. My laptop has a Cat8 cable going to a 1.2 gigapore on a gaming router, which I just bought recently. Now, I noticed a tremendous drop in latency. My latency was averaging 90 milliseconds, and now it averages around 4 or 5 milliseconds, and that's a tremendous, tremendous increase. The gaming router was around $220, but for me it was worth it. It has, again, a 1.2 gig. You can see I got gaming mode on real quick. I'll, let me say that. Gaming mode. Hags. Oh, <laughs> this pop decides to pop up now. Let me bring the desktop back up here in, in Steam VR. Hags is enabled, my hardware accelerated GPU, and variable refresh rate is enabled. And as you saw, gaming mode was enabled. So those are all my default graphics. Now, again, the gaming router has a 1.2 gig LAN port that my computer is hardwired to, and streaming wirelessly is a five gigabit gaming channel. So I have a dedicated gaming channel streaming to my Quest. It's a 5 gigabit connection uh, streaming. I don't think the Quest gets that, but that's what it is. So now here you can see I have pretty much all defaults. Now the pre-game, you're not going to see this until we go into VR. So watch when I switch into VR because you see it's not available. Now it is. Now I have FS2020. And you can see I have it set at 165%. That is the multiplier of the game. It is similar to setting the render resolution multiplier in the Oculus app when you choose 1.2, 1.6, or whatnot. This is the same. So it's a multiplier of what this is, which is currently set to auto. And then the multiplier is 165%. And now if we go into the actual, let me uh, shut off the frame rate spot. You can see the settings I have here. Anamorphic is on. I have 60%, 58%, 35%, MIP map off. And then these resolutions, and I'll try and get a screenshot or you can pause it. Now these advanced settings you actually have to turn on with the menu on the last tab. The horizontal offset, the scale, the vertical offset, those I adjust to my eyes to remove the artifacts out of view. So those may not be the same for you, but here you got to show expert settings. Now these are colors 
and saturations, these are really what you like in your eyesight. This is what I have it set on, but that's really personal. The important one is the performance one. And the bottom, the horizontal offset scale, those are, like I said, to my eyes to remove the artifacts. So those may not be the same, but the inner ring, middle ring, outer ring, those are what I have them set on, and the width and the height. So let me shut the frame rate off, get it out of the way, and now we'll look at my in-game settings here. So global rendering is 85. Terrain level of detail is 100. Why is this not... Oh, hold on. <laughs> it's one thing I hate about the controllers. My controller must be pointing towards the screen right now, so my mouse is actually disabled. So I need to pick up the controller. Let me get out of VR. I have to actually pick up my controller and move it because it was taken over for the mouse. I haven't figured out how to disable that yet, so I apologize. But, alright, so like I was saying, maybe I should just edit this out. Oh, too late now. Okay. Terrain level of detail is 100. My rendering resolution is 85, off-screen pre-caching high, terrain vector medium, buildings medium, trees medium. Now, if I'm near a city, I might turn those buildings up to high, but right now they're medium. The clouds low, rex texture resolution ultra, anisotropic 16 times, super sampling 8 times 8, texture synthesis medium, where water waves medium, shadow maps 15, 30... Terrain shadows, 256. Contact shadows, medium. Windshield, medium. Ambient occlusion, high. Cube map, 192. Ray marched off. Light shafts off. Bloom off. Glass cockpit, medium. Now, if I'm in the city or where there's a lot of buildings, I'd probably turn the terrain shadows off completely. Might turn the shadow maps down. Turn the light shafts up, especially at nighttime. And possibly turn the ray march reflections up. But for the most part, this is where they stay at. And you saw what I was getting, and you can see the videos I've been posting recently. I've posted, I, I mean, I think I put up like three a day now recently. So if you just go back over the past three days from when this video was posted, you will probably find six or seven good samples of my graphics settings. All right, hey, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the skies.